Today I'm going to show you how to plan and build your own castles in Minecraft. Now as you probably know, I love building castles and it is without doubt my favourite thing to build in game. However, planning a large scale project such as a castle is not always easy. So this video is going to guide you through my planning and thought process when it comes to taking on such a large scale project. Now if you haven't done so already, be sure to smash that like button before these creepers blow it up and let's start with the basics. One of the most common faults I see when people start building a castle is the lack of inspiration and ideas. Now I know it's easy to be eager to get started and jump in at the deep end, but it's important to take some basic ideas so that you know what you're going to be building because there are so many different ways that you can build a castle depending on your goals. Before you get started, take some time to look up some real life images, concept art or even models that people have built. This will give you some great ideas. I often use websites such as Pinterest or Google Images to browse for ideas because these always have a bunch of images with some great inspiration. Once you find some good images, it's a good idea to pick out your favourite designs and keep them aside for later on so that you can use them for reference while you're building. Another thing I often do at this point is look at castle layouts or overhead views to give me an idea of the shape and layout that I want my castle to be. This can be incredibly helpful and is very good for your planning stages of building your castle. At this point it is important to remember that these are just all ideas and it's important that you get some ideas before you start your building. You know, A castle is a very complex build and contains many buildings so be sure to get a bunch of ideas before you jump in and start trying to just randomly build it because it will make the process so much easier. Location is one of the most overlooked parts when it comes to building. The biggest issue I find here is the planning wasn't thought out far enough. In other words, they just planned around where they built without much thought of future plans for the area. Now I know that I often say over planning can cause burnout, so I'm not suggesting any extensive planning at this stage, but more so to take into account how the area looks and think about whether it is suitable for what you want to build down the line. Some important things to consider here are things like area. For example, if you plan on building a village around the castle, is there enough space to add buildings around it? Do you have access to water? If you wanted to build a moat around a castle, you're going to need a water supply, either a river or an ocean. Would you like to add a harbour later on down the line? If so, you're going to need access to an ocean, otherwise this is just not going to be a possible feature if you choose to add one later on. Do you want your castle to look like it is overlooking a big village or a town? If so, you're going to have to make sure that you build up on a large hill or a mountain so that you have that extra height so the castle can overlook everything. Another important thing to consider here is a biome. There are so many different biomes and choosing the right one is very important. Some things you might want to consider here are how you want your castle to look. For example, we just spoke about the castle overlooking everything, and in this case, maybe a mountains would be the best biome for you. Or maybe on a high hill, so you would want a hill biome that's going to be suitable to overlook enough of the village. If you want your castle to be a bit more decorative and maybe more like a palace, then you need to make sure you choose the right biome, because a lot of these palaces, they have a lot of greenery. So you want to make sure you build in a biome where you've got those lush greens for that nice green grass. For instance, a plains or a flower forest. Building in somewhere like a spruce forest is just not going to have quite the same effect because of that tone of grass. So think wisely about the colours of the biome as well as the actual biome you're building in. Another good example here would be if you was building a Tuscan or Italian style build, then maybe you'd want to build it in a savanna because you get that slightly yellowy colour to the grass which works well with things like vineyards and stuff that you would often find around those castles in those kind of areas. You know, and again, building in a different biome would give you a very different look. All in all, just pick the area wisely and make sure you have access to everything you want for your future plans. Now that we've planned out the area, it's time to actually make plans on the castle itself. But before you jump in and get carried away with some building, we need to actually make some notes and plan out what we actually want to be building. 
Now, as you know, castles come in all forms, shapes, and sizes, and they can be very different depending on the era, the location, and the place that you want to be building. So, first of all, you need to plan out everything you want to be building because some castles will contain loads of buildings with inside them, other castles are more so just one large build. You know, so there's there's different types of buildings, but each one will contain a bunch of rooms and many different things that you want to include. So at this point, one thing I like to do is make a list so that we can check things off as we go along to make sure that we don't miss any rooms or buildings and make sure that we include everything that we want. Now, castles can contain so many different rooms, but typically I like to include things like a throne room. I think we all know how important a throne room is in a castle. A feast hall kitchens, barracks, armory, king and queen's bedroom, changing quarters or a bathroom, courtyard, blacksmith, stables, storage area, gatehouse, servants quarters, dungeons, prisons, I think you guys get the point here, but there are just so many different options for adding rooms to your castle. Now, if you are struggling with ideas for rooms, then go ahead and do a search. And if you've started with a medieval or Victorian or modern, whatever style castle you're doing, be sure to use that in the search terms. For example, rooms you'd find in a medieval castle. Do a search on Google and see what comes up. You will get a bunch of references with a bunch of ideas. So if you're lacking any ideas, do a search and you will definitely come across something that you can include inside yours. Now at this point, we can finally start building. But before we get carried away, we want to start with just a ground floor layout. So this is going to give us an idea of the shape, the layout of the entire castle and give us something to actually work from. If you just jump in and start building parts of the castle, then likelihood is parts are not going to line up or work well together. So getting a floor plan in place, first of all, is going to initially give you the foundations of your building and give you an idea of where parts of the castle are going to go so that things line up and look properly. So first of all, start with the layout. Now, typically the layout can be very different from castle to castle and what your goals are. When I'm building, I like all the parts inside my castle to be touching. So for instance, the gate would be touching the walls. The main castle itself will be touching the walls at the back. And then things like buildings. So if I added a barracks or an armory or a blacksmith or stables or something like that, these will be either attached to one of the walls, one of the towers or one of the main buildings so that it looks like one complete building rather than opposed to a bunch of separate buildings. Now, I'm not saying that adding separate buildings is not going to work in a castle. It just depends on how you're looking at it and how you would go about it. But personally, I feel that a building for a castle, something that's going to be very grand, looks way better when everything looks like one complete build rather than a pose of a bunch of separate buildings. Take into your own thoughts, your own considerations and think about what you want to build. But make sure that you have a layout before you get started. While you're planning your layout, you also want to consider things like defenses. Now, it does depend whether you want to have a defensive castle or a non-defensive castle, depending on your goals. But if you are planning to add defenses, you want to make sure you include the right things and the space to put them. For example, if you wanted to add an extra gatehouse and have a bit of a bailey at the front of the castle, then you want to make sure that you make space to do so and make that into part of your floor plan. If you're planning on adding like weapons such as trebuchets and ballisters and stuff like that, then you want to make sure that you've got a place to put them. For instance, if you're adding a tower, make sure that tower is going to be large enough to support what you're putting there. If you're going to put some away so they look like they've just been put in storage, then make sure you add a storage area for them to go. It's just a matter of planning for these kind of things in advance because if you want to add weapons later on and you haven't got space to do so, it's going to make it very awkward to try and include it if you're lacking on space. Once your layout is all in place, you want to start thinking about your block and color choices as these are going to determine the overlook of the castle. And it's important to choose the right blocks that are going to suit the area that you plan to build. A few questions to consider here are things like your castle theme. Is it going to be old, such as a medieval castle? If so, then maybe something like stone and wood are going to be the best options here, as that's what they would have traditionally been made of. 
Maybe you want to go with something fantasy, in which case the sky is the limit because the color choices if you're building fantasy are endless because there are so many possibilities for what you want to build. It just depends on your liking. So be sure to play around with the block choices in that case and find something that you are happy with. What about if you're making a desert themed build? Because at this point, a desert themed build can be very boring. It can often be just plain using sandstone and not very much color. So one thing I like to do when it comes to something like a desert build is to try and find ways to incorporate other colors. This can be simple as adding in some little roofs with a bit of spruce, maybe use some campfires to make some little shelters, and then maybe somewhere to add some bit of plant life, get a bit of green in there, you know, add a few little bushes and stuff here and there, because those little color changes and tones are going to make such a difference to the build. So, you know, really think about the block choices you want to be using and try and find ways to include more colors to make the build look a little bit more decorative and add a little bit more life to it. If you're building in a savannah or maybe doing something Italian or Tuscan, then bricks and terracotta are definitely going to be your friend. Maybe some spruce roofs, maybe a little bit of a mixture of colors. But again, just like with the desert build, don't overdo too much of a single color. Be sure to try and find other ways to break it up and get a bit of color in there, even if it just means adding some plant life and some leaves and bushes, just to kind of make a little break in between and just make it not feel too much of the same color. There are literally so many color options here for what you can build. So it's a good idea to maybe make up a few different block palettes, have a little think about it and make sure that you choose a color palette that you're going to be happy with. Because if you're not happy with it and you want to change it later on, it's going to be a very big job to do and it's going to take up a lot of time. So it's always worthwhile playing around with the palettes to make sure that you make the right choice in the first place. Once you finally start building, you want to make sure that you keep your building in scale. Now by this I mean that things such as your walls, your towers and your buildings should have many height variants, but they should all blend in height. So for instance, if you had a very small wall and a massive castle, it's going to look a little bit strange. You know, if you have a very small castle on really high walls, it's going to look very strange. So you want to make sure that things are kept in proportion. For this, what I would typically do is I would have my main structure and then once I've got the main height of the actual building, I tend to come down about two thirds of the way roughly for my wall height. Then when you have your gate and everything else in place, you want to make sure your towers go somewhere above your roof height, but not too far. You want it to still look like a smooth transition between the heights. Having one random very tall tower is going to overpower everything and kind of draw the focus to that one point. So you want to make sure that you keep things kind of in balance without overdoing it. So if you have one large tower, be sure to add some nearby towers that stretch maybe half the way or three quarters of the way to even out the transition so that it doesn't draw one sore point to look at and make the castle kind of look a little bit out of place. Now, I just want to make a few little points here about detailing because detailing is often overlooked. And when you look at real life castle buildings, you'll see that most of the walls of them are relatively flat and not really overly detailed. And while I love adding t details to a build, there is such thing as over detailing. This could be simply by adding too many pillars or grooves to walls, maybe excessive detailing on the windows, or using a lot of stairs to create patterns deep within side walls. My point is that a castle looks nicer when you just add small details but lots of them and keeps them looking a bit more realistic rather than something that's too drastic that doesn't make sense close up but looks nice at a distance. Now we're going to be spending most time closer to the castle so we want it to look nice while we're walking around it rather than opposed to just seeing it from a distance all the time. Don't overthink too much of the shape and add in so many details. Keep it fairly plain at first and then slowly but surely add those small details because those little details will really add the difference when you start adding a lot of them rather than trying to add too many big and drastic details to a build that are going to really draw your point to a certain parts of the building. But up close, it just looks like it's just too jumbled to really make sense. And as always, don't forget the power of greenery and flowers. These can make a huge difference to a build. Add in some leaves up a part of a wall for some vines, add in some bushes, some little trees, some little flower pots and stuff. 
They add color, they add detail, and they add a huge mix of variety to the build. So don't be afraid of adding these if you feel like the castle or your building is lacking in something, okay? Because these will make so much filler details that it will make it stand out on pop. Finally, I have some last minute tips that should hopefully help you avoid some common problems such as creative burnout, which can happen when taking on large builds. So my first piece of advice is don't rush. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither would any castle. So take your time, enjoy the process and just take breaks from it if you need to. You know, don't try to do too much of the same thing because that is just going to be burnout. It's too much of one excessive thing continuously. So don't try and gather up all your materials for your entire build before you start because you're probably going to get burnt out before you even start building. Instead, Gather some materials in bulk. Get a bulk of materials, gather them up, and then start building. When you run out of materials, go back and do a bit of gathering, come back and do some more building. Do it in kind of spells so that you're not constantly doing the same thing. You're kind of breaking it that way between gathering and building, gathering and building. And it just breaks things up and allows you to stay more motivated for building. Another thing that can often cause burnout is working on the one same large build for a long time it can become hard work it can be so easy to burn out so having some smaller projects on the go maybe another little village project or a redstone project or something else maybe even go and do a bit of exploring just find other things to do in between doing the castle so when you're feeling a little bit sort of not in the mood to build go and do something else for a little bit and then you'll find yourself feeling inspired to get back to the build and continue on it rather than pushing yourself through it and just ending up being completely not in a mood and then putting down Minecraft altogether and doing no more building because it can happen. Be sure to light things up everywhere if you're planning in survival. It's so easy to miss a dark spot and then have a creeper blow up a portion of your hard work. So be careful and place torches everywhere. Lighting can always be adjusted later on, so don't worry too much about it, but just make sure that there's no spawnable spots for creepers or other mobs to spawn. Don't forget enchantments on your tools and armor to speed up the process and make building a little easier. For example, feather falling on your boots is very handy when building at height as it can save you when you're falling. Efficiency 5 on your pickaxe will drastically increase the mining speed. Unbreaking 3 and mending will help your tools last longer and gaining XP with mending will help them repair. Make use of scaffolding as it makes building a hundred times faster and is so much easier than using dirt blocks to pillar up. Above all else, make sure you're having fun and I'll catch you in the next one.